Hi, this is Nick from PrimeLoops.com. Today I want to show you how to use loops in GarageBand. Specifically, we'll be talking about two different kinds of loops, Apple loops and regular loops that would come in a WAV file format. We'll be talking mostly about Apple loops, which is a special format created by Apple, which includes a lot of helpful information that aren't included in regular audio loops. Now, Apple loops come in the AIFF file format. Again, that's an Apple proprietary format and the information that these loops can contain goes well beyond the basic WAV file that we're used to. For instance, an Apple loop might contain information on the original BPM of the loop, the key signature, descriptive search terms and genre information, and most helpfully it contains slice information, so that when you import the Apple loop into a compatible program such as GarageBand, you'll be able to slow down and speed up the loop without changing the tuning, and you'll also be able to change the tuning of the loop without changing the BPM. This is very similar to how the Rex file format from Propellerhead software works. So let's first take a look at how to access loops in GarageBand. If you come down here to this little I-shaped symbol and click on it, it'll bring up your loop browser here. Now any loops that will be found by this browser are going to already be in Apple loop format, which means that you aren't going to find any of your regular WAV files here. And I'll show you how to get non-Apple loops in the program later on. So first let's familiarize ourselves with the loop browser here. As you can see, you're presented with some genre information as well as some descriptive names, and these buttons will assist you in narrowing down your choices of loops to exactly what you want. If you come down here, you have three different views that you can organize the loops into. By default, it's set to this musical view, however you can also look at podcast-specific loops, as well as all of the loops in general. However, let's go back to this musical view for now, and take a look at how to use these search features. The way these are used is pretty logical. Say I'm looking for something like a beat, I'll click on the Beats button obviously, and then I'll come over here and further refine it. Say I'm looking for an intense beat, however that was defined by the author of the loop. In addition, I'd like it to be acoustic and intense. And as you can see, it's narrowed it down to this ambient beat loop, which fits all of the characteristics that I was looking for over here. If you want to restart your search, just hit the reset button here, and then you're free to use different search terms. For instance, I might be looking for electronic, and relaxed, and distorted. Now as you can see in these lists that come up when you search for loops, you have some helpful information, and this information is being read out of the Apple loop format. Here's the original tempo, the key that it's in as well as how many beats are in the loop. Of particular interest is this favorite button right here. If you click on one of those buttons, the loop will automatically be added to your favorites list. So I'll add this 80s dance bass synth 01 patch to my favorites, and now I'll reset the search. Now if I ever want to go back and recall that bass line, all I have to do is click on my favorites tab here. And as you can see, it brings up everything that I've marked as a favorite. You can do the same thing in the other views as well. Just click on Favorites, and as you can see, the loop comes up. Additionally, you can choose the scale that your loop is in, as well as just typing in search terms. I'll go ahead and reset this. Now the last thing to look at is this little search box right here. This is where you can actually type in specific words that you're searching for in your loops. For instance, if I want to find everything that I have that's an Apple loop and that was made by Prime Loops, I'll just search for underscore PL. Hit enter, and here's the entire list of Prime Loops stuff that I have loaded into GarageBand. So it's now obvious that I can import third-party samples in Apple Loop format into GarageBand, and it's very easy to do that. If I reduce the size of my GarageBand window here, you can see that I have some loop packs already selected from Prime Loops. Now I want to add the minimal twisted house drum loops pack to my GarageBand interface and all I have to do is just drag the folder down here into the loop browser, drop it on, and as you can see GarageBand now loads up all of those loops and categorizes them correctly into the library. So now that we've seen how to load up third-party Apple loops into GarageBand and also how to navigate this loop browser interface here, let's take a look at actually using these loops in our compositions. So first I'll scroll up to a drum loop that I want, say three time drums, I'll bring three time drums up here and just drag it right onto the timeline. And as you can see, it loads up the loop. 
Now that we have this loop loaded up, I'm going to change our view here over to measures. And as you can see, it's a four bar loop that sits perfectly in time. Even though my project is at 125 BPM and the loop's original BPM is 126, because this is an Apple loop, it stretched itself accordingly to fit the new BPM. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually loop this over and over again just by hitting the loop button. And as you can see, it already automatically loops up my entire drum loop. I'll get rid of this grand piano track for now. And let's hear what it sounds like. So as you can hear, the loop will stretch itself in real time to fit whatever tempo you're working at. Now I'll load in a melodic loop from our Mogalicious Funk Loops pack. So I'll just drag it in here, and as you can see, it's at a tempo of 90 originally. But again, it perfectly stretches to fit the new tempo of the project. Additionally, like I showed you in the last video, I'm going to loop this twice over to fit the length of the beat loop. And there we go, it's as simple as that. We've already got the beginnings of a composition going in GarageBand. I'll close the loop browser here, and let's look at how to load in non-Apple loops, that is, just pure WAV files. Again, I'll just make the GarageBand interface smaller here, and let's go down to one of our WAV packs. Let's try the Sunkissed House Loops pack. Now I know this is 125 BPM, which is the project tempo, and it's also in the key of C which will fit nicely with the melodic loop that we already have in there, in case we want to mix the two. So all you have to do to import a wave is simply drag it over the interface here. It imports the file, and there we go. Now that I have the loops loaded up, we can of course start manipulating some of this into the beginnings of a composition. Say I want two bars of one of these melodic loops and then two bars of another. That's very simple. I'll take this Apple loop and reduce it to just two bars. And then I'll come down here to this wave loop. Now of course I can't reduce the size of this using the looping tool because we're dealing with a fixed wave loop here. However, I can reduce the length of this loop so that only parts of it play back. Say I only want the first two bars of it to play back. And then I want that part to start right here at bar three. Now I want to duplicate this entire 4 bar loop and change it up a bit. So I'll just select all of these, hit Command C or Control C if you're on a PC, that copies. I'll bring the cursor right here and then paste it so now we have the same loop twice over. Now for these last 4 bars, I'm actually going to change this wave loop to play its last two bars rather than its first two bars. So I'll extend this back out to the original loop. And then now I'm going to push in from the beginning so that only the last two bars are exposed. And there we go, we've changed up the composition a bit. Additionally, I want to create a somewhat dramatic turnaround here, so I'm going to take off a full bar of these drums. I'll change the looping period here. And let's see how that sounds. Of course, I can then add software instrument tracks over this. All I have to do is hit the plus button, hit create software instrument track. It'll automatically bring up this track info view, which you'll remember from the last video. And I could, for instance, bring up a clavinet. The last thing I want to show you is the little loop editor that's included in GarageBand. If you just double click on one of your loops. Now there's not much going on here, but you can always quantize the timing of the loop, which is good if it's an actual performance that you played in rather than a pre-made loop like this. Or you can actually increase or decrease the tuning of the loop. And that's all there is to basic looping in GarageBand. It's fairly simple and straightforward and it should get you on your way very quickly. 
Just to recap, if you want to add your own custom loops to the GarageBand interface, simply drag your folder in and drop it over the loop browser here. From there you can use a variety of helpful search tools, such as these search term buttons up here, or the little search box down here. Remember that this interface only finds Apple loops and not regular WAV file loops on your computer. When you do find Apple Loops over here, you realize that they have lots of helpful information embedded in them, such as the original tempo, key signature, and number of beats. And of course you can favorite any of the Apple Loops with these buttons over here. After you find the loop you like, it's a simple matter of dragging it into the GarageBand interface, and from there you can always increase the looping area, or increase and decrease the actual size of the loop itself. I'll see you next time for more music production tips and tricks. Stay creative.